All right, uh, what are we doing today? We're going to uh, replace the carburetor on my 550. Uh, it's been mildly ported, and as you saw in the other video, <clears throat> uh, it had a bit of a off idle stumble. Uh, occasionally, would he almost die as well? Uh, these 550s have had a couple different. Uh, I think four different carburetors. The AT1, this carburetor is the AT1A. They had the AT7, and this one here, the AT12. Uh, supposedly, the 7 was okay, but for whatever reasons, they uh, again upgraded the carburetor. Now, This particular saw has had a, it's had a couple manufactured defects or uh, quality control issue actually is what I would call it. The transfer cover seals, uh, they're rubber O-ring seals, they're molded so you can't just use regular O-ring. <clears throat> uh, they're, uh, they're deformed, uh, they had gaps in them where there was Pretty much no way it was going to seal up properly. So when I poured it, of course, I, I removed them and I put some uh, Honda Bond on them and sealed them up real good. Uh, also, the intake boot uh, strato tunnels or tubes was actually one of the tubes was bent inward as the uh, carburetor body was pushed in. There are two little barrels that push in, and I'll show you in a second. Actually, I can show you with this carburetor here. These barrels go into rubber tubes, the boot, and one of the, the boots, one of the barrels was bent over, uh, so that wasn't sealing well either. So there's a couple little things I've had to sort out with this saw, and hopefully this is the last one. Uh, I don't believe the saw has an air leak, it doesn't seem to have any uh, uh, after full throttle run on or uh, any odd idling when you tip it or any starting. So we're just going to go ahead and try a new carburetor here. Now the gripe I have with Husqvarna and uh, steel with the auto tuning saws, uh, the Husqvarna's auto tune, these steels are uh, Imtronic is the fact that they don't that, that neither company offers an interface for an individual uh, you know this is 2018 uh, i have a 97 chevy truck with a reader i can plug in and it has bluetooth connection or wi-fi i'm not sure and it sends it to my phone which I have an app for, and I can read real-time telemetry and uh, any air uh, engine codes. Uh, you know, what the uh, mixture is even, uh, RPMs, the speed of the vehicle, and so on. That's a 1997 vehicle, okay? This should have a USB type C or whatever they're using now connector where I can at least plug it into my desktop or laptop, download a file, you know, a program, an app, and check the carburetor, okay? Because some of these carburetors that have, like, say, an off-idle tune issue or a kind of a dead spot, a lot of times the firmware updates will fix that. But I don't have a, really a dealer locally. And I actually did call a local dealer, if you want to call it local, he's about 40 miles away. And they wanted to charge me $75 to update the firmware and do a reading on this. That's, that's ridiculous. Uh, I can see who's going and still saying, well, the average guy's not going to care or know any different. And that's true. But what about a logger or, or a professional firewood cutter even uh, or an arborist? Someone that does depend on their equipment. And what if they say, you know, my saw's not running quite right, or I think it has a problem. In this day and age, 
you should be able to hook this carburetor up because it is auto tuning. It does have a little little chip in there. It, okay, it does contain a program. I should be able to read that on just about any device I now own. Tablet, smartphone, uh, or, com or regular computer. Desktop computer. Why Husqvarna and Steel wants to make this proprietary? I don't know. But I'll tell you, no one that I've spoken with personally likes that idea. No pro I've heard cares for these for that reason. If most people have a smartphone now, a lot of professionals carry a tablet or a at least a or a laptop with them in their in their vehicle work truck. If they had a problem, they could at least get an idea of what's going on just by hooking plugging into this. That's shame on who's foreign and steel big time. I know they want to proprietize thing, get people in the dealer, to get them to buy more stuff, but that's not going to work. As a company, Steel and Husqvarna can no longer hide from this type of stuff because guys like me will make videos about it and say, that's not right. This should be available to the general public or, or someone who purchase, purchases one of their products to go ahead and diagnose their own tool and update the firmware if, if possible. I have a Nikon DSLR. It gets firmware updates about once a year. But a, but a, a, a tool, no, doesn't make sense. It doesn't work in the long run for companies to do that. They have to get on the ball and realize they have to make an interface, just a USB connection, to where you can plug it up, download an app, and at least update your firmware. Even if you can't uh, look at all the fuel setting perimeters and the temperature and so on, just make it so you can at least download the firmware. That's a minimum thing you can do. You don't even need an app for that, really. Just a, just a file. Anyway, let's get to this. I'm going to try to work here and talk at the same time and replace this carb. Uh, these are a little tricky to work on. They're not too bad. Uh, you had these little... Uh, isolator mounts here like you do on uh, like you do on the uh, older 3 series uh, Husqvarna's it's pretty standard stuff I'm gonna take a pause here for a second and uh, that just kind of you unclip these little standoffs <coughs> if you will and I already pulled the screws out so this this oh one other thing you see these little green washers I have down here uh, you probably don't need three of them just one I was having an issue with this not sealing. You know, I've had the carb on and off a few times messing with it. I'll tell you, tell you what I did too to try to get to work. So I put a couple of these little refrigeration O-rings on here to increase uh, some of the clamping there. Because uh, a few times I put it back on, it wouldn't pump fuel because this was leaking. These these fuel lines, I, I'm not a fan of them. They're real pliable. They get hot. They get almost like silicone rubber instead of a harder, tougher rubber, but I'm uh, not sure why Husqvarna went with that, but they did. Maybe uh, probably a lot of it has to do with dealing with ethanol. Hope I'm uh, not blocking the view of the camera too bad. It's the first time I've ever done anything quite like this. I know Walt, I'm Sure, a lot of you guys watch Walton uh, Bob's videos. Walt is a, a Fleet Command, I believe it is. Oh. There we go. And they have a lot of good videos. He does this type of stuff all the time. Much better than I can. Much more eloquent than I'll ever be. Oh. I usually leave that attached. There's the uh, dump line for the fuel. I usually leave that attached and disconnect the uh, ignition wires here. I just usually leave that attached and kind of set the uh, intake, uh, upper intake manifold just to the side. Seems to open up everything pretty good. Uh, gotta be careful, there are little O-rings uh, there is a little o-ring up here that's kind of the carb uh, 
compensation deal. This is disconnected. The carbs are ready to be pulled off. Uh, and the way this new fuel line is a little shorter. Okay. Uh, because the old one goes in kind of through the back uh, uh, mounting bracket like so. So the carburetor just pushes into it. The nipple pushes into it uh, and, and uh, connects that way. I'll show you here. So this carburetor just pulls straight out. Oh, I always forget that. There are these little plastic clips at the bottom here. I'll show you those in a sec too. That hold the carb on. Little clips that this little clip down here. Little clip down here. It has a little retainer so it it, it sticks the car the carb kind of mounts onto it, keeps it from uh, keeps it from I guess getting too loose. The, the screws mostly hold hold the carb in. Uh, all right, and as you can see, you just have your electrical uh, connections here for the uh, the uh, wire to hook up when you program or uh, uh, update the firmware on your carburetor. Apparently, they used to only have this white connection, this one here, but now they put this extra one up top to make it a little easier. For uh, dealers to get to it, well, dealers should be in, in, in an individual to get to it. So that's the car right? It's an AT1A. Uh, see, this nipple goes straight back into here. That's your other fuel line. That is your fuel line, should I say? And it kind of mounts into the uh, manifold here. The new one is quite different. Mounts kind of downward like that, so the fuel line comes up like here instead of in like so. You can also see this carburetor does not have that little flange, that little ring. The new carburetor does not have that because the new car doesn't have that. I made sure to get the ring. The ring simply goes into the intake boot here. And what this does is help seal it when you, you kind of move the saw around. It gets manipulated because this does move around. And I, I had a saw that didn't, that, uh, didn't come with that. And uh, it was a Dolmer 5100S. They had issues with idling, uh, high idle issues and some goofy acceleration, uh, it would stick kind of a high idle, and the early 5100s didn't have that ring, and I got a ring for it, put it in, fixed the problem. Uh, what happens is the boot kind of forms a little vacuum, it kind of just pulls in, you can start sucking a little air. Okay, uh, let's take that fuel line out. Probably should have done a little prep work here. But what can you do? I don't know how this is going to go. I've never uh, placed a fuel line on a 5100. Mess. Yeah, you know what? Uh, go ahead and disconnect this this time. I'm going to be manipulating the saw quite a bit. So we'll get this off, keep it from flopping around too much. There. Makes things easier. If I was just, just swapping the carb, I wouldn't probably do that. And I think the way this fuel line's set up, yeah. Well, it's a little different than that one, isn't it? Oh no, no, it's the same. 
I was just looking at it. Uh, that, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like you have to put it in in between the tanks here. Well, I might be able to get in there with my uh, hemostats. Let's get, give it a whirl. Well, might be able to get the old one out. But I don't know about putting a new one in. I'm not too worried about doing that, breaking it, because it is the old one. I like to keep one around if I if I can, but if not, well, what can you do? Uh, the reason I'm replacing that is because the new fuel line is, like I said, it, it mounts differently, but also 26 millimeter difference in length. And I just, just am deciding to go ahead and put the new line in. What the heck? Why not? Uh, these are kind of directional. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without taking the handle off. Well, I'm wasting my time even trying. I'm going to take the handle off. That's boring. Just undoing screws, so I'll pause the video. And like that, the handle is off. Now it looks like I'll be able to get to that fill line pretty easily. Yep. And the old one. Keep that for later time. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty, pretty easy now. Side here does have an orientation at uh, keeps it from uh, going in the wrong way and not feeding uh, enough fuel. Oops, not too bad so far, except for having to remove the <coughs> handle. Floating around nicely. That part's in. The base is a little cramped here. I need to get a better setup someday, but doesn't everyone say that? And we have it. Plug it back in. This clip is kind of a bear. It's really tight. Works well though. Oh, hmm. I didn't notice that these leads here go to the coil. Well, the switch. I need and to come off the old car. All right, let's install the carburetor. So 
I better put that boot on there before I fully seat seat it. It's, it's on there. Let's get the throttle cable back to where she needs to be. There she blows. Kind of pull it up there. Full throttle. So that little upper intake manifold. All right, now this is kind of funny. You have to really manipulate the carburetor a bit to get this on properly. Not too bad though. That's good and you see this like I said I added I don't need three I don't know why I have three on there they help seal that up a bit I'm gonna put these back on again you have to kind of manipulate the saw a little in the carburetor but it does move enough Well, what are my final thoughts here? Uh, I don't know what I'm going for exactly. I guess uh, I wish I didn't have to put a new carburetor on it. Wish I would have been able to update the firmware and see where the, you know, see if that helped the off the bog or not. <clears throat> but as of now, you can't do that. Maybe in the future, uh, I don't know why I'm doing that. You can, or we'll be able to. I hope we will see. I <clears throat> hope Husqvarna Steelbook get the message and start putting just the USB connector on these. Or at least an adapter to USB. Yeah, looks like everything's hokey dory there. I love these uh, new flip caps they have on these. And if this breaks off, you have a slot, a slot there. Okay. 572 has metal inserts in the plastics. That's a good idea. I don't know how many times I've seen these screws stripped out. These handle screws in particular stripped out. Uh, it's not so much of an issue if you just remove the handle once or twice, but if you're a goofball like me and you like to modify saw, sometimes you have the handle off a few times and plastic holes, they get the, the threads, they get worn out pretty, pretty easily. You gotta be careful not to over or under torque, but over torque is worse in my opinion. Under working so there it is carbs back on 550 xp hopefully it'll run the next video will be of it running and my hopefully uh satisfaction of finally having this all working properly it's taken uh taking a little while uh who's farna steel Manufacturers, <clears throat> my gripe again, main gripe, you know, this is a new product you're going to have growing pains. 
But you should have thought ahead with the software, with uh, how your customers are going to be able to go ahead and get firmware updates. If you need them, most won't. I, I understand that. But that should be made available to the consumer. And that's all for today. I'm going to shut it down. Probably needs an air filter. <laughs>